Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to an Emmy made project. This project has been almost a year in the making. It began last April 2020 when I planted some seeds. I planted bottle gourd seeds because I wanted to make a homemade water bottle. I'd never grown bottle gourds before. I started them in my basement and they sprouted, but they never really did all that well. And I later learned that bottle gourds really like warm temperatures. I have since gotten a seed sprouting mat, which is essentially a heating pad, which warms up the soil and encourages warm, loving plants like tomatoes, peppers, gourds, squashes to germinate. And I got this trellis, it's called the Titan Trellis, and it worked out really well because we don't have a lot of space in our garden. And this trellis allowed the vines to grow over tops. So you could walk underneath them and then it allows the gourd or the fruit to hang down so you can see them and watch them grow and it's much easier to harvest. And it's just super fun because you're walking through a tunnel and then there's all these gourds. I also grew loofah. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up above and down below to that video. Lufa, of course, is used to exfoliate the skin and that was my first attempt as well. And I also grew that on the trellis. So bottle gourds are monoecious, meaning some flowers are male and some of the flowers are female. Pollen from the male flower has to fertilize the ovary of the female flower in order for a fruit to form. So in the very beginning, I had many, many male flowers, didn't see very many female flowers. And I learned later that this is very typical of squash plants. Apparently they put out a lot of male flowers first to alert the pollinators that females are on the way and there are just fewer female flowers. I believe the ratio is about 10 to one. If you follow me on Instagram, you heard all about this in my stories, but it's absolutely fascinating. You can differentiate between a male flower and a female flower very easily. And because I really, really wanted to get a bottle gourd, I hand pollinated some of these myself. And then a couple days later, you would see a developing bottle gourd. So, so much fun to watch the development of the gourds when they are tiny, they are so stinking cute. Just, it's just a joy to grow things and watch them grow. I just find so much pleasure in growing a garden. Another thing I learned about bottle gourds is that the flowers open at night. So in the evening, you'll begin to see the flowers open and therefore they need night pollinators like moths to pollinate the flowers. I ended up with about 15 bottle gourds, all different shapes. I got a huge one, I got small ones, all different sizes, but they're just lovely. So many of my Instagram followers told me that you can eat bottle gourds, but of course you must eat them when they're small, otherwise they become too woody and fibrous to eat. But I did not want to eat them because I wanted large, beautiful, fully developed fruit so I could make a water bottle took off all of the leaves, just left the fruit and let them hang there all winter long. And here are a couple examples of what the gourds look like after they've been sitting in the snow and the rain and the winter for about four months. Absolutely dry and hollow. So I've got a bowl of warm water here with a couple tablespoons of bleach. If you're sensitive to mold at all, I suggest wearing a mask. You can see there's this layer here that you can just kind of rub some of this off. But then I liked using this dishwashing steel scrubber. You just gently abrade the bottle gourd and then it ends up revealing the beautiful gourd underneath. I saw some Korean gardening videos where they take the fresh bottle gourds and they process them by boiling them and cooking them and then scooping out the inside and then letting the shell dry. And they get very similar results. So if I tried growing bottle gourds again, I think I would love to try that technique. So here's my clean bottle gourd. It has a beautiful kind of mottled texture. I'm gonna be using a cork for my stopper. It's gonna slice off the very tip of our bottle gourd. Now be careful, it's really easy to make a hole that's too big. Now that I've penciled in where I'm gonna cut, I'm just gonna use a saw. This is just a pull saw. And now we're just gonna snap this part off and it should leave a little opening like that. And we're gonna break up the membrane and the seeds inside. Give it a twist. Then you start shaking what we can out. And then you'll see these seeds. They're so cool looking. They almost look like little frogs or something. I've got some beach pebbles here and I'm gonna drop them inside the bottle gourd. And now we're gonna make a lot of noise and we're gonna swirl this around. And that's gonna agitate and scrape the membrane from the inside of the bottle gourd and also crush it up a bit so it's easier to get out of that tiny hole. Alrighty, ready for some noise? Here we go. Shake it. 
shake out the rocks. You're now going to seal it with wax and I'm going to be using beeswax because I have beeswax because I have honeybees. If you haven't seen my beekeeping adventures, I'll put a link down below to my beekeeping channel. So here's an example of burr comb. This is made out of 100% beeswax. This is also beeswax mixed in with propolis and all kinds of other good stuff. So the bees collect nectar from flowers and once enough water has evaporated from it, it becomes honey. The bees then cap it with wax to seal it for winter or whenever they want to eat it. In order to harvest the honey, we need to uncap or remove that top layer of wax so we can extract the honey. And that's what this is. These are cappings that have been cut off and then washed of any excess honey and dried. So on a hot day in the summer, I will process this. I also have a video to that where I process and clean this to purify it into a block of beautiful beeswax. And from this beautiful, gorgeous, precious beeswax, I've hand dipped my own candles. I've also made canoulé, which are a beautiful French pastry. And now I'm making <laughs> bottled gourd water bottles. This is essentially a double boiler. The reason why we're doing it this way is to apply a gentle heat. You don't wanna put beeswax directly over a flame. It is very flammable. We're just gonna coat the inside. So I'm gonna pour in about a cup melted wax, a good amount, swirl it around and then swirl it and turn it back into a vessel. But then we're going to do this again, pour it all in. This is going to waterproof and seal the gourd. It'll also prevent any mold growth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do three coats. And just scraping off the excess wax. And it's much easier to do when the wax is warm. So that's pretty much it. We're going to let the wax cool completely. And then to treat the outside, I've seen some people varnish them, but I didn't want any varnish on mine. So I'm gonna use a combination of food safe mineral oil. This is just used for cutting boards and a little bit of beeswax. Taking the mineral oil and just rubbing it into the gourd. And then you can buff it and get a nice kind of matte finish. Alrighty, my lovelies, here they are. My finish water bottles made out of bottle gourds that I grew. I'm so pleased with how they turned out. They're so stinking cute. Look at this shape, so beautiful. And simple cork stopper. The last thing I wanna do is get some leather or a lanyard or some kind of jute twine or something to create a little strap to hold this. I've got a liter of water here. Oh, I love that sound. This holds almost exactly a liter of water. How perfect. Oh my gosh, it's so much heavier with the water in it. Put the cork in it. So cute. Leaks a little bit. Not too badly though. Finally, let's drink out of the bottle gourd. Cheers. <laughs> so great. Tastes like water. Surprised. <laughs> there you have it, a homemade water bottle made out of a bottle gourd that I grew from a seed. So stinking awesome. I'm gonna send this one out to my brother. He has dibs on it when I told him about this project. He says, you need to make me one. So this one's going out to you, we. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my new website where I have printable recipes and little DIYs, including this one. And yeah, I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>